Am I a traitor? You might be asking what flag is used in this video. This is the civil peacetime flag of the United States. Most have never seen the flag. We see the battle flag and the Admiralty battle flag with a gold trim. To truly understand what I say in this video, you will have to follow along in the written text. You will realize why when you get through it. If you can get through this video, you will be able to answer the question, am I a traitor? This is not an American problem. This is a world problem, as most of the world is occupied by a criminal fraud. You need to know a few things about me first. In 1970, I was six years old. I attended elementary school on Fort Carson. One day, the Army, or whoever else, decided that everyone in our school was to be inoculated for tetanus. So they said, even though every dependent in the school was current on all of their shots, which already included tetanus, per SOP. I ended up with a bright rash all over my back and nearly lost my ability to breathe. I went to the hospital and they had the antidote ready and standing by. It destroyed my eyesight, affected the way my body grew and disfigured me. Ten years later, after losing the ability to lift my f left foot up, an army doctor did an exploratory surgery and left me with a lifelong limp. After doing some research on what he described he found in me, it was clear that he had removed all evidence of polio that had attacked my perineal nerve. How could that be, given I had, as an army brat, already been overseas and had been inoculated for polio so many times I could not count? Up until that point, I was looking forward to attending West Point. That was an act by the supreme creator of nature. I did not understand why at the time and felt cheated. That was until I learned the law and figured out that there was no way in hell that I would be permitted to commit such an act of treason. My father kept a parchment copy of the Constitution on the wall and I studied it when I was 12. The words were pretty clear and easy to understand, but when I looked around at what my country had become, I asked, what the hell is all this? That was 1976. Not an accident. It was the Bicentennial. It was a trick. It would take 30 years of intense experience to figure out the trick that was used to pervert the good intentions of the people of America and the world into something twisted and evil. At exactly 4.44 a.m. July 4th, 2006, 4444 is not an accident. I figured out the trick. Although the trick is easy, it requires an understanding of the law that 99.99% of the people on this planet have been deliberately kept from learning. Here's how it happened. In 1861, the southern states had become an agricultural economic powerhouse that threatened to depose the rule of the central bank cabal. The cabal had coerced the puppet European countries into enforcing unfair trade tariffs against the southern states. The northern states, whose industries were not subject to these tariffs, were not acting to protect the interests of the United States by cooperating to respond to the unfair trade practices. The southern states knew that Abraham Lincoln was a puppet of the cabal and did not accept his treasonous installment. After his unlawful ordination, the southern states in their lawful constitutions reserved the lawful right to leave the Union any time that Union no longer acted in the best interest of the people of their state. In March of 1861 the people of the southern states removed their consent and lawfully withdrew their elected senators and representatives from Congress. Without them they lost the quorum and the Republic, being an all-or-nothing proposition, was lawfully suspended. Congress was adjourned sine dea, meaning without a day. 
Under the lawful parliamentary procedure, Congress was required to wait for the willing participation by the Southern State Congressmen, get them back in the legislature, reestablish the quorum, and vote to reconvene a lawful session of Congress. That has not happened. The people in the North knew this, and they lacked a moral will to fight as they knew they were participating in a gross violation of people's rights. This is why early in the war they were getting their asses kicked by General Robert E. Lee. The cabal was not finished. They needed a moral cause to improve the morale of the northern states. So they made the conflict about slavery. Yes, slavery is wrong. And it worked. The cabal had effectively used the cause of slavery as the means to enslave everyone. It was a masterful stroke of genius. But they had a problem. The law established by precedent, that was firmly established by the Declaration of Independence is, governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. Why is that the law? The word government comes from two Latin words, guvernare, which means to steer or control, and mente, meaning mind. So government is mind control. Mind control only occurs with the trust and consent of the one being controlled. You can trick someone into that consent, but willing consent, either conscious or ignorant, is essential to gaining control over one's mind. After Sherman raped, pillaged, and terrorized the people of the South, they forcibly installed their puppet so-called state governments against the will of the people. They did not consent. So it was not lawful government by any lawful definition. That was a problem. There were several failed attempts to come up with a trick to reestablish control. So under sovereign French law, they filed the Articles of Incorporation for a new entity, and because two entities cannot have the same name, and since the United States of America was already taken, they used the name United States of America in all capital letters. It is a corporation, or a fiction of law, and not law. Since a fiction of law does not have lawful power over a real man, they needed a trick to establish joinder, or tricking a man into binding himself to a corporate entity under the exclusive control of the officers of the corporation. Using the law, your word is your bond, this Congress replaced the Union States with subsidiary corporate federal states, or Virginia, New York, South Carolina, etc. Now, when you speak the name Virginia and Virginia, they both sound the same, but they are not the same. In 1868, Congress unlawfully added the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, which states, Section 1. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jur jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Why did they have to do that if it weren't for the lawful necessity of creating new fictional entities by redefining common terms under law? The new corporate office, known as person, was redefined in color of law to person in the common language. And that is the only way the public policy of the United States of America is lawfully binding, as ignorance of the law is no excuse 
You say you are a person subject to the law under the Constitution. They hear person under the Constitution subject to the law. The 14th Amendment could not be lawfully ratified because there was no lawful government. Enter the word legal to replace the word lawful. It is legally binding, but not lawfully binding, especially if you do not know any better. U.S. citizens are granted civil rights under the legal authority of the corporate United States of America, replacing the constitutionally protected rights. Civil rights can be suspended any time the corporation decides to. In 1885, Congress unlawfully but legally accepted the Constitution on the behalf of the persons of the United States of America. Why couldn't the persons do it themselves? That is because persons exist only in the mind and have no lawful authority to do it for themselves. So people are walking around thinking they are persons enjoying constitutionally protected rights under the law when really they are presumed to be persons or U.S. citizens subject to the corporate color of law under the exclusive authority of the officers of the corporate entity known as the United States of America. <laughs> are you angry yet? But wait! That's not all! In 1913, Congress exploited a loophole in the Constitution found in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 to exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district not exceeding 10 miles square as may by session of particular states and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of the government of the United States and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state in which the same shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenal, dockyards, and other needful buildings and they created a separate nation under international law since no one was using United States of America they use that but its real actual name is New Columbia. Its flag is the gold trim Admiralty battle flag. Every US soldier currently wears it on their uniform and the regular battle flag. The Republic was not using it. They use the same word as your bond trick to lawfully bind people out of these United States into the new country by using the Pledge of Allegiance. Look again with new eyes. Up until 1906, the pledge was, we give our heads and our hearts to God and our country, one country, one language, one flag. That was not useful. It then changed to, I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands. I pledge my head and my heart to God and my country, one country, one language, and one flag. Then it was changed in 1923 to, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States and the Republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. It still was not useful to create joinder as it made reference to the United States. In 1942, they had the right formula. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You are now swearing your allegiance to an inanimate object, which is a sign of incompetence. If you change the word flag into the word bicycle, it clearly demonstrates the absurdity. It is useful in that the insane have no rights or power, nor are they responsible under the law for their actions. And they need to be forced to do what they're told. It follows the first things first rule. You pledge to a bicycle, and then to the United States of America, and then finally to the Republic, which was suspended in 1861. Do you see why you are shunned at your local sports arena? 
the little country of the United States of America is actually a democracy and not a republic. They added under God later, but that does not matter. How powerful is speaking the pledge? By your word, you are bound. The moment you speak those words, you voluntarily give up all your lawful rights in exchange for suspended civil rights. And under current colorable law, you give them the power to shoot you where you stand. Now, the corporation had its own country, the United States of America, which consists of Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, Pirates of the Caribbean, Guam, U.S. Virgin Islands. Since the Cabal now had a standing army, and no reason to obey the prohibition of maintaining a standing army by the Constitution, they immediately began conquering all other nations in the world, using the same trick to deprive countries of their lawful governments and replacing them with corporate fictions under the authority of the United States of America. That is why you have a U.S. military base in your country. The leader of the free world is not a joke, folks, except the word free is not the same as free. Oh, and your uh, civil rights have been under suspension since the Martial Law Act of 1933, March 9th, 1933 to be exact. And that is why you have none of the rights you thought you had. How do I know I am right? In 2010, in a star chamber created in Williamson County Court, I proved to Judge Dean Higginbotham and my pro bono counsel that Texas statutes could not be made to apply to me. The only people allowed in that locked room were the judge, the prosecutor, my counsel, Heath Treadwell, my wife, and I. I sat in the jury box because they did not have the lawful power to force me against my will past the bar. Dean is a good man who obeyed the law. The prosecutor did not like it, so later they came up with some sexual harassment excuse to push him off the bench. That was itself immoral, unethical, and criminal. Three years later, and right after I said, since we have been under martial law, since March of 1861, on the 18th of February, 2013, in 5th Circuit Federal District Court, Judge Sam Sparks used criminal force to force my compliance. Good luck unsealing that record. Several attorneys have tried. I filed a complaint against Sam Sparks with the 5th Circuit Court of Appeals, and they failed also by criminally depriving me of my rights. When those people you think are your public servant swear an oath, which entity do you think they mean? Do you still wonder why the system is collapsing? They have a right to do this to people who ignorantly consent. But to do that to me is a real crime. And justice is an awesome power. This is the reason that this world is shit and most of the ignorant slaves are about to be rubbed out, and for good reason. Now it begs the questions, why am I still walking around free? Why, if they actually had the power to do so, haven't they just thrown me in federal prison? Why haven't they simply shot me down in the street like they do with the tens of thousands of people around the world? The reason is I have an ally so powerful that he will kick the living crap out of anyone, sometimes before they even think to mess with me. There is no justice for those ignorant of the law. They cannot stop a flesh man in which the spirit dwells. There just aren't enough of us around. At exactly 4.44 a.m. July 4, 2006, I was baptized by the Holy Spirit and given my knowledge of the law. Do you think it's fun when 99.999% .999 of the people on this planet have no idea why they suffer and why criminals have it easy? They are on the wrong team. 
We just need to add some members to the right team. Now the questions. Am I a traitor to the people of this world? Are you? How about you do yourself a favor and all of the rest of us in this world and share and like this video. Now it is natural to ask what can we do about it after we spread this knowledge around? Well hit me up on my Facebook page under Roger Kent Poole and I'll show you how easy and painless it is to extract yourself from this twisted funhouse. So don't freak out, there's no need to be afraid. Uh, think about this for a while. There is no need to seek your freedom if you stubbornly believe you are free. And the most effective way to defeat an enemy is overwhelm them before they even realize they are an enemy. That is what is happening in the world right this moment. Because we believe we are among those who are there to protect us. This is Roge. We'll be talking to you later. Take care.